Hi, Jill Brotherton Art here again today. Um, I've been doing videos, but I've not been happy with them. It's a strange thing. I haven't been able to upload them because, I don't know, it's just complicated. <laughs> I've been really busy um, starting my new website. Um, I've just been doing lots of stuff and, um, you know, I just um, really haven't had time to... Um, you know upload videos and things like that which is you know not my intention I, my intention is to keep um, uploading videos for you to see and having little chats um so that's what i was going to do today i was just going to do a a little floral painting while i chat to you about um being a creative and um you know my latest projects so um, I've been a creative, I suppose, all my life. I think you, you either are or you aren't. I mean, I think we are all creative, obviously, but um, some people have a, an innate drive to be in a particular way creative um, through art um, expression or through writing. And I happen to be um, creative in both those ways. I, I, I really like writing and I really like art i favored writing for a while because when my children were young it was more practical um i'm, I'm a single mother my um their father decided the grass was greener uh, when i was pregnant with our third child which obviously left me in extremely compromised and vulnerable circumstances and the last thing i i'm not doing this as a pity plea but the last thing I had time for was to be getting out um, oil paints with, with children um, running around all over the place, um, you know, with them being, especially oil paints being not only messy, but also toxic. Um, so that kind of never happened. And I writing was something I did while they were napping. Um, the trouble with that was um, I... Um, I didn't have any material success and I was pretty naive um, from a business point of view at um, capitalising on um, opportunities um, with my novels um, and an opportunity, uh, my best opportunity was when um, an, um, a representative from New Line Cinema um, made contact regarding uh, my one and only book at that point that I'd um, written and now I didn't have an agent um, and my publisher was pretty rubbish to be honest and they'd never had a situation where this had happened before where I was, uh, somebody from a Hollywood studio had um, you know asked for a, a copy of the book um, and because they had never had it before they, they didn't know how to handle it and I certainly didn't know what, how to handle it at all. I had no idea. And the whole thing just drifted and I, I don't really know whatever came of it really. I mean, normally what would happen if they're interested is they would buy options. But if you're unrepresented and and um, so on and so forth, I mean, you, you really, you, you're really just open to being completely exploited or ignored or whatever. Um, so... I don't really know what happened to that, um, but um, that was that. Um, and the trouble was, um, because I had a very close encounter with success, or I felt that was, I knew somebody who read movie scripts, who vetted them, and they said that it was, you know, extremely impressive that, this, that they'd actually come to me because, you know, normally publishers and people with a lot of clout make these things happen and they spend a lot of money making these things happen for authors so to have it just sort of come to me out of the blue was was amazing but shame I, I just did not know how to capitalize on it I did not know anything about how to handle or deal with the with Hollywood studios so that was the end of that but because I got so close to it I thought that um I must be on the right track. So I kind of, but what, a, what I didn't realise was that I was completely incompetent <laughs> from a business point of view, as a lot of us creatives are, but you know, you can't afford to be, so you have to get savvy about that. Um, 
and I am definitely more sav savvy about that. Um, and then I, I got fed up with writing totally because um, some awful things were happening in my personal life, um, as if my husband leaving me wasn't bad enough things went actually from bad to worse which I do not want to get into because I don't want to bring you all down um but um and I think you get you do get to a stage where being creative is extremely difficult when you are under such pressure mentally and emotionally and financially and I I yeah I pretty much wound down the whole thing I wasn't making any money I didn't have it in me to capitalise on it because I was just dealing, putting out so many fires just by trying to survive my everyday life um, that, um, that nothing, you know, nothing came of it. And I thought I was probably never going to write again. <clears throat> by this time, my children were getting older <clears throat> and I started sort of just selling a few bits and bobs on eBay that they'd grown out of and what have you and I, I would occasionally by this time because they were older I, I could get the paints out without worrying that they were gonna you know have them all over the house and eat them or something like little children do so um I started painting you know and and throwing the odd one up on eBay with the other items that I was selling and I was really amazed that they sold so that's when I thought okay I um I'm going to start doing this full time and that's that's what happened and um you know now I sell paintings all over and um um and that weirdly that kind of success um has led me to um become a writer again so I um I did miss out a bit about my greeting card, uh, my my um, foray into greeting cards. But um, everything I did, I was learning. Everything that I did and I failed at, I was still learning. I was still trying. I wasn't giving up. And I think that's the key. Um, anyway, so all of this, what's happened is I've come back to writing, um, which is why I haven't uploaded any of these videos because I've I, I'm doing a new website and I've been writing and I, <laughs> I'm just working all the hours. My poor children, honestly. I used to uh, cook. I sold recipes as well and mostly in Japan. The people pe people in Japan, some in America, seem to like my recipes. And, um, you know, I was used to do all these lovely home-cooked meals to practice my recipes. My poor kids are like, what the hell has happened to our dinner? <laughs> because... You know, it's it's really is the bare minimum that I'm doing at the moment to just um, to um, you know get through the day um, each day. You know, with everything done, ticking every box. Um, anyway, so yeah, so I've got a new book. Well, it's it's not a book. It's, I can't decide yet whether it's a short story or a novella, but I'm really happy with it. I was being really bogged down. What happened was when all the stress attacked, when all the horrible things were happening to me, and when I say horrible, I mean unimaginable, but I, I can't write about them, even though my friends have said do it. I can't. Maybe I, it, it's actually too hard to write about things that are true. Um, anyway, uh, where was I going with that? can't decide whether it's going to be um, um, a, a novella or a short story. It's not going to be a long novel. I know that much because I, I don't know. I don't think people have got that kind of patience for long novels anymore. Maybe they have. I mean, tell me in the comments what you think. But also because I guess I write in a fractured way, fitting it around uh, family life and um painting it suits me to do something that um i can have a sense of achievement over like a novel takes so long to write and in the end you you, just, you don't make any money you know or obviously some people do but i haven't um because i don't advertise which is silly but i should but um 
and it you know it seems like such a lot of effort for so little reward sometimes but a short story i don't mind you know or a novella it's um because it's about the sense of achievement i i didn't realize i thought i was doing it for the money and then of course when the money didn't come in i i, I just got so demoralized and gave up but now that the art is providing me with an income um as well as um you know my online business which i i sell a i have a couple of online businesses and i um you know i have an income i i can relax more about the um writing and i feel like i'm not writing for money i'm writing uh just really good stories and 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 that takes the pressure right off me you know i mean the pressure is still there to produce a good story that 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 is potentially commercially successful i don't want to write you know some sort of long boring self-indulgent yarn um but I, but the once the pressure is off, I, I thought you know it would be easier to write if you had all this spare time and it was the only thing you had to do and how wonderful that would be. But actually, that adds pressure to you because it is the only thing you've got to do right, and so suddenly it's 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 a big pressure. Um, once I found that. Um, you know, I, I was successful in other areas, I could um, indulge myself with the writing and it, it just seemed to flow a lot better. Um, I'm really happy with my latest story. I don't quite know how to present it. I was going to send it for free, um, but it's not that I don't want you people to have it for free. That That's not it. I, I do kind of. What I don't want is for industry people to have it for free um, and to just sort of, I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard to describe, you know, I just, I, it's hard to describe how I feel about it. I've had so many stories stolen. You still hear people saying, send your books off to the slush pile. Um, and I would definitely caution against that because I would say I've had at least three of my novels have been um, stolen. I mean, to the extent where the characters, the storyline are exactly the same. And the only thing that's different is the author's style of writing, which in one particular case was dreadful uh, and an insult that that person was given my book and my story to write and were just a dreadful writer that's just they must have been a friend of the publisher or something because they're not even well known but one of the books was actually a children's number one bestseller and the character in it even had the same name as my character which is an unusual name it's not just like joe or fred or you know it was a unusual name I can't say it because I don't have to, even though I wrote it and I have all the documents proving I wrote it first, I don't want to say it because I, I can't actually afford to fight a, a battle. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Um, but that really upset me. Um, that, that happened to me three times after submitting novels to literary agents and publishers. And I determined after that that I would never, ever send another book to a literary agent ever again. Because I think that slush pile for them is just, um, it's just a trove of, of ideas landing on their desk every day. And they're your ideas, your hard work, and they have no qualms whatsoever about stealing them so um and there's no need it's like you don't need a gallery to sell art now you don't need to be represented you don't need some stuffy old woman or man to say no work's not good enough for my gallery so what you know just sell it online you don't need to submit yourself to this kind of um I mean, criticism is good, actually. It does, it does make you work harder. But you get that from your customers, you know? You get that from your customers. I know 
um, if, if I've sort of not done my best with the painting, that I just won't get a good price for it. When I try to sell it, people aren't daft. You know, that they, they won't, um, they make their own choice. They are, they are your critic. You don't need some, some industry snob to tell you. You can work it out for yourself if you're not doing uh, very well. And you know where to improve where to make your improvements so you know so anyway that's where I am so I actually sound like I'm moaning a bit but I'm actually really really happy I am um, I'm really pleased with I woke up at four o'clock this morning so excited to write my new book and I don't mean to toot my own horn but I do come up with some bloody good stories <laughs> whenever I tell my children they're always you know like oh it's actually really good. I, I know, like, when I'm about to tell them, they're thinking, oh, here she goes, one of her boring, you know, wants to talk about what she's doing, you know, because they're teenagers. <laughs> and um, and then I and then they listen, I make them listen to my outline, and they're like, oh, sounds really good. And they're, like, always surprised. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's nice. It's It's nice. It's satisfying. I feel really good. That I'm doing that at the moment. Um, I I do love writing, but it it had become difficult for me because I just wasn't making the money to to justify it. And I, after the New Line Cinema thing, I thought I was sort of close to to sort of breaking through, and I I wasted a few more years exploiting that um, without sort of really. I was too naive. I just didn't know anything, and I was trying to. My thought, I couldn't, my children were so young and I was stuck at home with them all day, every day. Um, I couldn't even complete a thought, you know. It was just buried by driving them around, cooking, laundry. I had no help. My parents didn't live near. Um, It was just a really hard time. And, um, you know... Um, I, in the end, I just couldn't justify um, the, the writing. It felt like an indulgence. But as I say, it, it seems to have come back. Even even though I have a lot less time, I seem to I seem to be able to do it to to write. So I was really surprised by that. I, I was really happy to discover that it hadn't gone away. Um, and I just cannot wait to to. Um, to bring it to you I don't know whether to do um I probably will sell it on Amazon I definitely won't be submitting it to any rotten stinking literary agents let me tell you that much just so I give it away to them no not happening um so I don't know whether to publish it on Amazon or um on uh, oh I will do that sorry no I'm going to do that anyway um but also, I was thinking I might do it as a podcast. So if any of you out there know anything about selling through podcasts and what have you, you know, open up to me in the discussions. I'd like to, I'd like to hear your ideas about that. I am, um, you know, I am. Um, but that's what I'm thinking. I, I like to embrace um, technology. Um, I'm very interested. I'd really like to learn code. Um, well, I was, used to want to learn to speak another language, um, but especially with all this lockdown and everything, you feel like you can't go anywhere. And with me doing my website and stuff, I realised that, uh, you know, I would be probably better off um, learning coding. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I say that. I say that as if there's... 50 million hours in the day and let me tell you that gives you a little hint of what my book is about um i'm not going to tell you any more than that no way as far as i know nothing like it has been written i tend to do my research about my storyline i don't jump on the bandwagon of what is popular what is already selling so you know like when Gone Girl came out and then everybody started doing similar stories I don't tend to do that I tend to research when I get an idea I like to work out if anyone's doing it or done it 
that's that's what really had galled me about the fact that my stories were stolen from the lit through the literary agents. That's what really galled me because I worked really hard to try and come up with something new. And um, so, um, you know, you go to all this trouble and then, you know, only to find that, you know, you've put your book, it's gone into the slush pile, you've been rejected. And then you go into Waterstones and you look and you think, oh, that book sounds suspiciously like mine. And you start reading it and you read the back cover and the synopsis and you think, oh my God, it is mine. So, and as I said, in one case, even the same names, even the, the, the main character had the same name. Um, so that was pretty upsetting. Um, but you know you've got to be realistic there are some really rotten people out there it's not a conspiracy that they're going to steal your stuff they are going to steal your stuff <laughs> you do have to get real about that <laughs> um, so I know some people get lucky uh, and they have good experiences with literary agents um, but I'm not one of them and you know now that there are all these new technologies and platforms for selling um, creative works um, I feel like I just who needs them um, I, I don't think you do so I mean it hasn't JK Rowling even dumped her literary agent and gone gone it gone it alone or set up her own I'm not sure but it's certainly a, a, a bit of a cartel the um, I don't know what it's like in in America or in other countries, but certainly in England, it's all about who you know and not about talent at all. Um, so you know, I don't, I obviously, I don't want to get involved in that at all. Not for me. Anyhow, so that's so that's where I've been. I've been really busy. Um, I've been, you know, really excited about all the, th the only thing that gets me down really is that I just don't have enough hours in the day. Um, and I, I do, I do, even though my children have had lots from me and I was around when they were growing up, well, I had no choice, you know, cause their dad wasn't. So I, um, I, I, I still feel guilty, you know, I think, oh, do don't they I still feel guilty now even now you know as I'm working so much I sort of think oh you know I used to I, I did used to love I mean any parent will know that lovely feeling of feeding your kids lovely home cooked food and now it's like what do you want check the freezer <laughs> Although we did have a nice stew on my birthday the other day. We had um, an oxtail stew. From our, the oxtail was from our local farm shop where it's all, you know, the, the animals at least have some kind of a happy life before their demise. I can't buy supermarket meat anymore because of simply the horrendous animal welfare fair standards in farming at the moment in commercial farming I just I'm not going to get on my soapbox but anyway I cannot bring myself to eat meat from supermarkets anymore um I think it's good I think everybody should eat less meat and to be honest I wouldn't be sorry if I was a vegan I don't think um and as I get older that may be the way I go for health reasons you know so I, I don't like animal cruelty. It does upset me, and you know, obviously there is a little bit of hip hypocrisy there if you're if you're eating meat and claiming, you know, you can't bear animal cruelty, which is what I'm doing. But um, you know, you have to build up to it. I have to build up to it. I I don't have enough um, battery at the moment for for going full on vegan because I I don't. I'm not in the habit of it, of eating like that. So that's something I have to build up to. Um, but we'll see. Anyhow, there we go. 
I'm terrible at doing my signature. It's a bit dry, that's why. Yeah. So there we are. I cannot wait. I wanted to bring you this book for Halloween, but it went off the boil a little bit because I was so busy. Um, but now I think it's it's back on the cards. As I say, I was up at four o'clock this morning. Sometimes you'll have a little bit of distance from a book. And um, and I, um, I go off it. I think, oh, I sort of felt... Um, um, it's a bit weird how, how I describe you get into a sort of um, I don't know any of you write or anything like that it's not the same with my art but it, it certainly happens to me with writing it's almost like um, uh, I don't want to say manic because it sort of sounds like a mental illness or something it's, it's just like um, there's some sudden clarity like the, the book just comes it's weird and when that happens, and there are times when it's happened when I've just ignored it and I haven't done anything, and then the the book it goes. You can't re you can't when that moment has passed, you cannot recreate that. Ins it's the inspiration that's it. You cannot recreate uh, the book, even though you might remember what you were going to write. You can't do it in the same way if the inspiration isn't there, isn't new and just burning in you. And what happened was sometimes, but sometimes I write those books like that. And then um, they, um, I look back at them and I think, actually, what the hell? This is rubbish. <laughs> so, but this one I had a break from of a few weeks and I've gone back and I've looked at it today and I thought, oh, actually, this is really good. So this is one I'm definitely going to bring to you. Um, I think you're going to enjoy it, especially if you like kind of things with a twist at the end little horror stories that kind of thing then it's not a horror um more like i like psychological things you know a bit more things that question humanity question people's motives and you know things like that psychology um things like that so there you go there's a little painting for you i hope you enjoyed that this is going up for sale on my ebay store um starting at 99p I uh, don't know how long I'll be doing that for. But anyway, if you want to bid on that, you better be quick because they only go on for sort of 10 days or so. And then I will see you again in the next video. I can't wait to bring you my story. Don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell and all the rest of it. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.